So how can brands make sure that they're still discoverable in this new environment? If you're a brand with tens of thousands of products, that doesn't help you. How do you think this will disrupt existing operations? Get your data right and consumers will find your products. Hi, I'm Elena and this is Business Casual. And today we're talking about AI and how it can be applied within the fashion and lifestyle industry. And today I'm joined by Sebastian Spiegler, head of AI at Rhythm. Welcome, Sebastian. Thank you for having me. Before we dive into AI, I have a fashion question for you. What was the most bizarre item that AI recommended you to buy? I could think of cow pattern high heels, which are probably not my style, but it made me think. Let's uh, talk about the consumer, because the consumer journey, search and discovery is changing quite rapidly. There is already a lot of traffic that's coming from LLMs. So how can brands adapt to that and make sure that they're still discoverable in this new environment? As you say, consumers search more and more for products within LLMs, the, the chat GPTs and the likes. And, and here, I think there are at least two ways of brands dealing with this. Number one is making their websites more discoverable for bots through LLM as um, text, for instance, where you can describe whether the information on the website is just used for indexing or also for training. The second step is providing data feeds through companies like us, Rhythm, integrating those data feeds into OpenAI or Perplexity. And then the, the third step is focusing on the data quality, the images, the text basically being as high quality as possible so that users can find, consumers can find the products they're searching for. And when it comes to product descriptions, which is quite important, I assume, also for the LLM discovery, but also many consumers still go to the websites directly. So how do you ensure your product descriptions are optimized, yep. but then still uh, make sense for the end consumer? Yep. So there are different aspects to this. Number one is you can kind of generate product titles that have as much relevant information in them as possible. You can do this with LLMs. You can use dictionaries where you have words that you want to include or phrases and words or phrases that you don't want to include. You can then use templates where you kind of predefine the, the structure. This is relevant if you want to speak in the voice of the brand, for instance. And then you need to fact check it because of the challenges with LLMs, hallucinations, and there are clever ways of doing it. Number one is review. So having review processes where you fact check. Number two is where you use another LLM as a judge to check for certain uh, points and basically see whether the information given is, is correct. And then number three is workflows, having workflows that allow you to do this at scale. So what we see are often solutions where you can optimize one product at a time. But if you are a brand with tens of thousands of products, that doesn't help you. Basically, if it takes you a minute per product and you have an enormous catalog, you need to have clever workflows for that. Once you start selling in this multi-market, multi-channel setup, profitability becomes a very important topic. So how can brands drive profitability with AI? Profitability. Profitability is usually driven by returns. And returns is a hundred plus million euro dollar pound problem, which we see troubling a lot of the, the big fashion brands specifically. What we see here is that you have a small number of products driving a large number of returns. So what brands want to see very quickly is at ideally at a variation, variation level or at the skew level, which are the, the products that drive most of the returns. And we've run analysis for some of the big fashion brands where something like 500 SKUs drive 10% of the, of the returns. And this means that if you attack those SKUs, you can greatly reduce those returns and increase your profit margin. Those issues can be the image, it can be the title or the description, for instance, missing the fit information. And the ability then to also see how different channels and locales perform, the ability to move products easily, for instance, from Germany to um, France or Italy that have low returns is important. An example here is a big European fashion brand stopped selling swimwear completely in Germany due to the, the high returns and moved them to the UK. But what you want to see here is rather than killing an entire category, you want to identify those specific SKUs that drive those high returns and see what the reason for that is and mitigate those. 
What trends are you seeing uh, when it comes to the e-commerce space and how LLMs or AI in general uh, are disrupting it? What we see happening is agentic search, the ability to find products not just on marketplaces or through social, but also through chat bots. And then from there, basically the automation of it. So we have agentic search and then also agent to agent communication where those independent agents communicate they may check your stock, they may order, or they may deal with your returns. So I think what we're going to see over the, the next year or two is a lot of automation in the agentic space. How do you think this will disrupt existing operations? I think it'll, it'll help to make them more efficient. And, and I think the preparedness of the, the players is the most important piece. But I think efficiency, driving efficiency, not just through the, the catalog and the onboarding, but then along the supply chain as a whole, I think is, will be a positive effect. There is a big gap between how fast the technology is moving and how prepared we all are. So what can we do to better prepare for this future? So I think preparedness starts with data. Get your data right and consumers will find your products. And this is true for marketplaces today. This is true for the agentic search engines tomorrow. And I think this is where, where brands should focus on. Thanks for unpacking this topic with me today, Sebastian. Thank you very much. And that's a wrap. Thanks for tuning in to Business Casual, Keep Dressing Europe, and we'll see you soon.